Good morning, Bulldogs. I'm Alexa Hernandez. And I'm Mia Brache. Today is April 16th. Recently, there was a leak of wastewater in Manatee County, Florida. Due to the bad regulations in place, this water is very toxic and has caused for the evacuation of people in that area. Here's Elizabeth Grana with more on the story. Recently, news has come out that Florida Reservoir is leaking toxic wastewater. Florida's Department of Environmental Protections has announced that this water contains toxic waste and fertilizer runoff that is on the brink of collapse. It is allocated more specifically in Manatee County. Now, if this incident were to occur, it would create a great catastrophe and would affect many people. Furious environmental activists claim this is due to decades of regulatory failure. Nearby residents are being affected greatly as they have had to evacuate from their homes. In the meantime, there are crews who are trying to plug in the leak. Other crew members are trying to pump wastewater out of the reservoir in hopes of reducing the waste just in case they are unable to stop the leak. Since this is an ongoing situation, it is still being monitored, leaving news reports on standby. Hopefully, this situation will be handled in a controlled manner and this possible catastrophic flood does not occur. This has been Elizabeth Grana reporting for Braddock TV. In Britain, the death of Sarah Everard has sparked the movement to protect women. After not having come home, Sarah was found dead less than 50 miles from her house. Her death was covered by some local news outlets and then reached social media. Sarah, Sarah's death has inspired others to say their stories and spread awareness on this horrific topic. Here's Emily Castaneda with more. The death of Sarah Everard has sparked a global movement to combat violence against women in Britain. This tragic event has opened the eyes of many and brought attention from all over on the importance of protecting women. No one understood how this could happen to someone they described as sunshine and light along with bright and beautiful, someone who was warm and empathetic and always ready to support her friends. She was walking home when she was kidnapped and a week later her body was found more than 50 miles away in a wooded area. The news of her disappearance spread online from her friends and family in order to receive any information about her disappearance. When news broke out that Wayne Cousins, a police officer who was charged with kidnapping and murdering Sarah, her story was published by more news outlets and grew a bigger audience. This audience focuses on protecting women and bringing attention to the severity of the problem. Many women were arrested at Sarah's vigil because they broke the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, but their dedication was unmatched when 1,000 people attended the vigil after it was canceled. Sarah's story reached multiple platforms and hashtags, such as hashtag reclaim these streets and hashtag text me when you get home, were created so that women could share their experiences and give advice to other women in order to prevent a tragedy like Sarah's. A poll conducted by Gallup showed that 77% of white women feel safe walking alone at night. Meanwhile, 67% of Hispanic women, 63% of Asian women, and 51% of black women feel safe. This goes to show that within each minority, the numbers decrease. Many women have also brought up the fact that even if she was drunk or if it had been later at night, it was still not Sarah's fault. Much of what has been shown on social media is that there is a misconception that events like these happen because of what someone is wearing. This being false since this happens to women of all ages, no matter what they're wearing. Sarah Everard's murder caught the world's attention because it proved that something like this could happen to anyone. This has been Emily Casaneda reporting for Braddock TV. There are many local restaurants that have been trending all over social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok. We took it upon ourselves to try these restaurants and tell you if it is worth the hype. Here's Elia and Lydia with their review of Aguagate Century of Love. and today I have with me Lydia Lopez and today we'll be reviewing um, Aguacate Sanctuary of Love. So first we have our drinks. Um, I got the mojito and I got the dragon fruit. Pink dragon. Pink dragon. Okay. It's really good. It's like a very refreshing lemonade. I really like it. 10 out of 10. Um, mine is very fruity and very like summer type of vibes. Even like the color, like the hot the pink. pink. Yeah. Um, 10 out of 10. 
So, um, Awakate is a restaurant that offers vegan food. Their whole menu is completely vegan. And so today, I will be trying the Awakate burger. And Lydia will be trying the classic burger. That's really good. Mine, personally, it doesn't taste like a real burger. Mm -hmm. But I would come back and eat it again. And supposedly this is like Miami's best vegan burger. And honestly, it is. I would come back and totally like it has try their good vegan menu. flavor in it. Like the sauce is like super good. I really like it. There we have it. Now we're going to be trying the Nutella toast with bananas and berries. This is really good. I really like them. The focaccia bread is nice and toasty and then it complements the Nutella. And the berries bring it a little bit more sweetness. Mm -hmm. So I really like it. The berries are really sweet. I really like it. Overall, Awakate, 10 out of 10. We highly recommend. This has been Leah and Lydia reporting uh -huh. for BTV. The new movie Godzilla vs. Kong from the MonsterVerse series was just released. Having seen the great reviews about this movie, BTV had to review it. Here's Catherine with her review on the film. It's an epic showdown between two titans. Godzilla vs. King Kong is out now. The latest installment in the MonsterVerse series pits the two legendary creatures against each other. Scientists take Kong on a journey to Hollow Earth, his true home. But when they cross paths with Godzilla, who's on an unexpected rampage, things start to get ugly. Godzilla vs. Kong delivers on the promise of an awesome clash between two giant monsters. It's action-packed and anyone would enjoy it. The effects feel natural and the creatures look super lifelike. The fight scenes are dynamic. They keep you on the edge of your seat. Leading up to its release, people were debating who would win. We won't spoil anything, but the verdict seems obvious when you think about it. I mean, Godzilla has atomic breath, King Kong is big and tough, but it's not like he has lasers or anything. The movie's gotten pretty good reviews so far, and it's actually turning a profit at the box office, which could mean a solid comeback for movie theaters. Godzilla vs. Kong has a BTV seal of approval. You can watch it in theaters or stream it on HBO Max until May 1st. NFTs, also known as non-fungible tokens, have recently been all a rage. It all started in May 2014, but are now hitting the market and benefiting artists everywhere. These NFTs are helping to change the art world as a whole. They're introducing a whole new take on the ownership of digital artwork. Here's Isabella Gaitan with more on NFTs. A new tech phenomenon is shaking up the art world. Non-fungible tokens or NFTs are a kind of digital token. An NFT could be a digital drawing, animation, trading card, or even a music album. People can buy these tokens and blockchain technology verifies who's purchased them. The catch is, someone can download that same file over and over again at no cost. So what's the point of buying an NFT? When you purchase an NFT, what you're actually paying for is the ability to say that you own the token for that file. The token acts as a certificate of authenticity. If downloading a file is like having a poster of a painting, Buying the NFT is like owning the original piece. With the digital art collection selling for $69 million, it calls into question if digital art can be just as valuable as physical art. For collectors, this seems like a transition into the digital age. NFTs can be resold for a profit as the price changes. For artists, this could be a great way to be adequately compensated for their work. Artists receive a percent each time their art is resold. NFTs give the average person more of an opportunity to branch into collecting than traditional media would. But, given the state of unemployment in the U.S. and the high cost of most non-fungible tokens, the rise of NFTs seems like an impractical hobby for the wealthy. Regardless of opinion, there are downsides to NFTs. The environmental impact of NFTs is considerable. There is a massive amount of energy use associated with Ethereum blockchain technology. The speed of data mining is burning 28.3 terawatt hours of electricity in a year. That's more than the country of Ireland produces in the same amount of time. Right now, the future of NFTs is unclear. As technology advances, files can lose quality or stop opening, and websites can shut down. This means that these massive cryptocurrency investments could be worthless in the years to come. Proponents of cryptocurrency continue to push the idea that NFTs have a lot of economic potential. 
but many skeptics see this opportunity as nothing more than a bubble, just waiting to burst. This has been Isabella Gaetan reporting for BTV. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ghb underscore TV. Tune into our YouTube channel on Fridays at 10.20 a.m. Remember to make it happen with Braddock TV.